Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. I've been working for almost six months on a game called The Dreadful Whispers. Recently, I've been making amazing progress, expanding on the world, polishing levels, making lots of art and small cutscenes. Never have I worked on a single project for such a long time. It's such a great and challenging game-making experience. But of course, creating a larger game isn't always fun. There are times where you need to spend entire days going through all your game's scenes, fixing UI, minor bugs, or pumping out sound effects for random things in the world. Plus, if you work on something for too long, you might get tunnel vision and lose perspective, falling madly in love with your buggy, messy game, or quite the contrary, turning completely blind to your game's awesomeness and only focusing on the nitpick negative quirks. So the other day I felt like taking a mini break from the dreadful whispers to avoid burning out on it and instead have lots of fun prototyping tiny games. There's something very relaxing about just coming up with a random, silly or interesting idea and making it in a super short period of time. So I decided to challenge myself and have fun making 10 tiny game prototypes in one day. I figured it would also make for an interesting video. Again, these are not polished, beautiful games, some aren't even playable, but just mini demos of tools or ideas I wanted to try out. The main goal of this challenge was to have fun, try new things, and take a break from working on a larger, more serious game project. So on Wednesday at 8am, I began my game prototyping journey, armed with the Unity game engine and Photoshop. To warm up, I decided to make a mini drawing application. So I made several paintbrushes, and each one would give you a different stroke pattern. I also made it so you could change color and the size of your brush. And of course, you can also erase these splotches of paint. I also realized that this could easily be turned into a fun little coloring game for kids. Knowing I had 10 games to make, I tried my best to work on each prototype for no longer than an hour. I finished this one at 9am sharp, ready to tackle my next idea. The chains. For a long time I've been wanting to learn how to make a believable, cool looking simulated chain or rope in Unity. But I'd been procrastinating to take the time to figure it out. Turns out doing so is a piece of cake thanks to the 2D hinge joint component. So I populated a small scene with chains and had fun jumping around colliding with them. There are so many levels in the Dreadful Whispers filled with chains. For now they're static, but soon I'll have them moving about in a stylish way thanks to this prototype. Still curious about 2D physics, I decided to try and make a ragdoll sort of character for my third prototype. I love the wobbly look of the characters in Off The Sticks, a game being made by a cool YouTuber called Danny, and Stick Fight the game looks epic with its frantic, excited stick men. So I tried, and failed, but eventually got something to work using, again, the awesome hinge joints component. It looked a bit stiff though, mainly because my stick man character didn't have enough joints, so I made a new one with lots of joints, and got this cool wobbly result. It's just extremely satisfying seeing the limp character fall and crash around. I spent a good 15 minutes making him fall from various heights and with different obstacles in his path. Then I decided to make dozens of ragdoll men fall and ah, that was also satisfying. I definitely want to add some creepy ragdoll characters to the dreadful whispers now. Next up, I made a silly but surprisingly fun two-player game. One player controls this little squishy character with his eyes closed, and the other player must guide his blind friend through the level, telling him in which direction he should move and how fast he should go. Me and my brother had a blast. I think I sounded slightly mad, yelling at him to move a tiny bit down, then left, then up, and right, no, no, move right, stop! Such a silly game made in barely 45 minutes, but it's full of potential, I think. For the fifth game prototype, I decided to tackle something else I'd been procrastinating on for quite some time, and that's controller input. I've never made a game that can be played with a controller, 
and I've made a lot of games. So after watching some tutorials and checking out some easy Unity documentation, I figured it out and soon had two angry looking player characters moving about a scene wielding massive hammers played with controllers. The most challenging part was figuring out how to get the weapons rotating in the direction of the right analog stick. But me and my brother figured it out with this piece of alien looking code. It was a lot of fun and again has opened up lots of interesting possibilities. It's so much easier making a great local multiplayer game with several controllers instead of a single keyboard and mouse. And I'll probably add controller support to the Dreadful Whispers 2 with this new knowledge. After a nice lunch, it was time for game prototype number 6, a physics-based football game. Not the most interesting prototype, but we had a really fun time playtesting it. Hey guys, we're playing yeah. those football games, it's so cool! Whoa! Whoa! And again, it was just made in an hour. Making something crappy or boring is without consequence, because it was made in such a short amount of time anyway. I always recommend game developers, even absolute beginners, to take part in game jams or make a game in a single day or just a week. And beginners often reply that they aren't good enough yet, that they need more time, that it's too hard. I think they say that because they are scared to fail. Ironically, failing is exactly what they need. No one cares if what you've made is a buggy mess. Keep failing and improving. Make crap fast. Learn from your mistakes and just keep going. Making games fast is also the key to flushing out from your system bad ideas. So many people, myself included, have jumped into a game project and started making great art and clean code without even knowing if the core gameplay and idea is interesting, fun or engaging. And we only realized it wasn't any good several days or even weeks later. Huge chunks of time spent making beautiful art for a game that was broken to begin with. So prototype, test things out, and don't be afraid to fail. So yeah, where was I? Yeah, the football game. It was a weird mess. Look at this funny bug. For number 7 we have a puzzle game. I basically tried to merge platformers and top-down games. So this is the same character, just from a different angle. When this character moves forwards, this one also moves forwards. However, when this one moves up, this one doesn't at all because it's from a top-down view. You can't really tell in a top-down view game whether or not the character is standing on the ground or not. And when he moves left and right, this one doesn't move at all because this is a side view. And in side view games, the character rarely moves between backgrounds and foregrounds. Hopefully, that makes some sense. So I made a couple levels, didn't feel really inspired though, so I yeah, definitely won't expand on this concept in the future. After dinner, my brother wanted to join me and give me a helping hand making the 8th game prototype. So together, we came up with a cool multiplayer racing game. Again, the art is very crude, but the core gameplay, though not incredibly original, was such fun. We learned how to make a split screen with a different camera following each player. You simply had to try and be the first to reach the golden grandma. If you hit the side of the road or a quirky character on the way, you would go back to the beginning. This was probably the most entertaining prototype of the day. What are we making? We're making a racing game, but grannies, biscuits, biscuits. It was past 10 p.m. at this point, and I was really running out of creative energy, but there were still two game prototypes to make to complete the challenge. So me and my brother made a buggy two-player shooter game. He used my drawing tablet to draw this sponge man, and this prototype is played with the controllers again. But yeah, we were a bit drained, so this mini game didn't go very far. And finally, just wanting to draw and listen to some music while doing so, I made a weird random fantasy village simulator. Just hit the space key to generate a new squishy village. Like the ragdoll characters, watching these little villages generate themselves was very relaxing and satisfying. I even drew some cartoony characters and then randomly generated tiny armies instead of towns. So that was a cool mini project to work on before going to bed and falling into a deep slumber. And that will mark the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Seriously, working on these 10 game prototypes was a huge amount of fun and taught me a lot. Try it yourself, maybe not 10, but 
five during a single day. If you're in a creative block, this can be a great way to blast out of it. Often, we get stuck because we're trying to think of the perfect game idea, or story, or gameplay mechanic. Putting yourself the pressure to dream up something amazing won't always get you very far. You'll more than likely feel frustrated and more stuck than ever. So just run with that random, silly idea you have, and by working on it, very interesting things might come to your mind. And if nothing does, just move on. The fear of failure doesn't exist here, because you're only spending a tiny chunk of your precious time per prototype. Failure is the default, so if you succeed in making something really cool, or coming up with a great idea, then that's a massive plus. Alright, thank you to my amazing patrons for their financial support. I'll see you all very soon for a new devlog video. In the meantime, keep creating and have fun. Cheers!